Hello everybody, and welcome back to the range. Tom here, and today we're doing another Four Horsemen build theme is Safari. When I think about theme of Safari, I think about the movie Ace Ventura When Nature Calls, as the video clip in the bottom says. You know, this was my pick of the month uh, for the Four Horsemen, along with others. So why don't we go ahead and let's get started. <laughs> You know, when I picked this as a safari build, this, that was the only theme I could think of for this kind of vehicle. You know, when you when you think of safari, you think about, you know, people going out there and doing the big game hunts and, you know, stuff like that. You know, when I first came up with the idea of safari, I was thinking about throwing like a little bench seat on the front, as you've seen from that little movie clip. But it didn't quite work out that way. I knew I was going to cut a lot of the casting off, and I'm talking about maybe mostly the back half portion of it, because I wanted to give it more open room. I didn't want it closed in. Um, I ended up getting rid of that center post. It's okay. Everything still worked perfectly. Um, I knew I was going to get take the half, uh, back half of this uh, interior portion off. Some stuff changed during the progress of the video before I got it finally done. But I, I knew there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to do. I wanted to put some big old tires on it. I wanted it to, you know, have a safari theme style paint job. You know, that kind of thing. So what I did first was I took some milliput and just kind of filled in where the gaps were for the axles because I wasn't going to use those uh, spots anymore because I was going to be building a, uh, I, at first I was going to build the suspension from scratch, but I couldn't get it to work right, I guess, I don't know, but I ended up changing that out and doing something different, you know, after I got it all sanded down, cut down, smooth, you know, had the, come out of uh, the casting coming out of the gun oil, aka citrus strip, uh, went ahead and marked up where I was wanting to cut because you know I wanted to give it at least some meat still on the top portion of the casting to be able to use to build off of whatever I needed to do and it took me a while to cut this off so I did a lot of it off camera um, especially when I was cutting the sides down and stuff that that stuff I did all off camera because it was just taking way too long. But I ended up coming out, you know, I really liked how it went, you know, did a lot of filing, you know, to get everything smooth and, you know, everything looking right. You know, I didn't really polish it up because I didn't really see the point because I was going to be going over it with a matte clear to give it that kind of look. You know, between the filing, you know, I didn't really do any more cutting on the casting other than just cutting down the post some, you know, to get them to fit with what I needed to do. So, all in all, everything was going great. It, it was it was looking really well. Like I said, some stuff got changed throughout the process from start to finish, you know, but all in all, the final results was amazing looking. I really like how it all turned out. I really like the look of how this came to be with that back half cut off and filed down. It looks really sharp. It's starting to look like that easy kind of safari style build. But I also had to cut down the windscreen of it because I wanted to make sure that it didn't, you know, cover up the back half. So, you know, I made sure I cut the right angle, cut the right spot, you know, smoothed it all out, got it to where it'll fit in there. You don't see it sticking out the back which is a good thing so you know when it was all said and done you know the, the miners things were the best parts you know I wanted to make sure it fit so I clipped off the, the little tabs there in the front and you know got it to where it would fit down in there had no problems you know securing but the windscreen just wouldn't fit right but I ended up gluing the wind, windshield in uh, when it was all painted and everything. And you don't get to see the paint job until the very end. Hate to do that to you, but that's how I've been doing it. 
But, uh, you know, when I got to this point, I, was, I knew I was going to have to cut the half, the back half of the interior off because I was going to add some stuff in the back. Wasn't quite sure what all I was going to add, but I did add something. You know, I wanted to make sure I cleaned it up a little bit, you know, because I wanted the, the paint to go pretty decently on there. I wasn't really worried about it because it being a safari build, it's going to look all banged up. It's going to look like it's, you know, been used. But, you know, you never know. Because um, I had a lot of themes in my mind about what I was going to paint it, how I was going to paint it, what colors I was going to paint it. You know, I got this new wheel jig from Brad over at uh, Full Custom Diecast. Makes it easier to paint the rims on the wheels when I needed to because I already um, put the rims that I was going to be using into a uh, the oven cleaner so they were already stripped down and everything so I could easily paint them you know I got this brush guard from Jack's Diecast Garage another buddy of mine who sent me some 3d printed parts in my last uh, mail call video you guys seen these are one of the bumpers I got from him so I used that glued it on and honestly, I love I love how this looks. It, it really gives it that off-road style look. And this is a part that I was trying to do. It did not make it into the final results because I ended up taking them off and designed a different thing. Because what I was trying to do is build like an overhead, like a canvas or a little shadow, or a shade area or whatever. I don't know what it's really called. But I was trying to build that over top of it, so all like, I had to do was just put it in the, the styrene tubes and just set it in there. But for some reason, it just it wasn't coming out to how I was expecting it was going to be. So, you know, I, I did a lot of changing like between now and I built this uh, little tire hitch. It has a little magnet that attaches it. And see, that's the fun thing I like about doing, you know, stuff like this. Because I can make movable parts and, you know, and, and I really like making st stuff removable, moving parts, you know, stuff where it looks decent. And it pretty much goes along with the theme. Because, you know, most people think Safari and they're going to be like, oh, off-roading. Of course. You know, I've got to have an off-road suspension for Safari. You know, snorkel. Well, it depends on where you're safariing at. Or you're doing a safari at. Because you're not going to really need a snorkel if you're in the middle of the desert. So what I did was, with the off-road style, I took a, one of these Just Trucks uh, bases and I trimmed it up quite a bit. You know, I made it sit down a little bit lower to where it would fit the style of it. You know, and it gives a good little height to it. You know, I like how it looks. Um... They're not bad bases. They're just when it comes to like certain trucks, like like an easy build like this one, you know, it, it it helps. And you know, I'm working on possibly eventually gonna get me a 3D printer in the future so I can do like my own custom off-road bases and stuff like that, you know, and make them to fit where they can fit almost any kind of you know casting. You know, but I'm also on the dilemma whether I want to do decals, you know, but, oh my gosh, like, I was looking at some of the decal printers for the white toner printers and stuff like that, way out of my budget, way out of my price range, but at least the 3D printers are pretty much right in my price range, I should say, so that's probably what I'm going to end up doing, I don't know when, but eventually I might get me a 3D printer, who knows, and what you know I had to do a little bit of modifying to the, the suspension because like the holes for the axles were just way too wide so I just took some styrene and just kind of inserted it in there cut it in half you know and gave it a little bit of a uh, how do I say it kind of a spacer I should say to get it to where the axles of the wheels would fit and here in a little bit you're going to see me testing out some wheels no i did not go with those wheels i just wanted to see how they would look on it 
and honestly i didn't stick with them i i did not stay with those i stayed with the smaller size wheels and if you ask me i like them better they give it that more of a safari look you see here that i inserted a back seat you know i'm starting to build the top off you know where you know it's gonna have a luggage rack setting i'm gonna end up putting some mesh in it to give it like that little canopy look and all in all, everything's just starting to flow together at this time. You know, I'm taking this styrene and I'm just cutting it small. I'm not going to be cutting a large sheet of styrene because I just want it to fit uh, just enough to where the luggage rack and stuff would sit on it and not actually cover the entire thing up. And so I, I just cut some little strips so it'll set, you know, got it to where it'll set even after I glued everything in place. Everything, you know, starting to look really good. The interior at this point's not glued in at this moment, but it will be getting glued in. And it, it just, it helped. Honestly, it's got a lot of uh, space in the back, so it's kind of it, it does help it a lot with that safari style look and the paint scheme I went with after everything was said and done because you know I have like little water cans and stuff like that I could throw in it at a later date but you know I just wanted to just make it simple and like it was it hasn't been loaded yet like it just rolled into the town and you know nobody's used it yet and it's just sitting there so they haven't really put anything on it so it's just kind of a bare casting right now you know there, there's no emergency stuff for it or nothing like that because i really don't have a lot of stuff to include with it but maybe at a later date i will and i'm using window screen for the canopy style mesh and i thought about covering the entire thing but with the brass tubes or the brass rods on the sides it wasn't going to work out that well because I wouldn't be able to keep them down. So instead of that, I just cut it to a certain length and a certain width and just draped it over the back. So the back part was covered, but the sides were not. And honestly, I like it a lot better that way. You know, I, when I painted it, I painted it the same colors as the truck. And, you know, everything was just kind of going as as well as it could go honestly you know um i was working on this thing for about a week or so and you know because I, I just had trouble coming up with some ideas of what i wanted to do with it but when i finally got you know what i wanted to do to it started it and just took my time with it <clears throat> that's that's the thing you know don't rush anything take your time you know if it takes you a couple tries you know no big deal but you know that's one thing about me is like I, I try to make it to where my videos I got a constant uh, videos out there for you guys my subscribers going up which I appreciate it you know I got 3d parts coming in from other people I got the monster jam challenge coming up which it's not too late um, I'll leave my email in the description if you want to still try to get part of that you know, you gotta hurry because the due date for the trucks to be here is the 29th. So by the time this video comes out, you have probably already missed it. But I'm giving a little bit of leeway because the, the event starts on the 3rd of April. So whatever castings I have by the 3rd of April are the ones that's going to be in the Monster Jam Challenge. So if you want to get one in, send me an email. And let me know and I'll send you my address and give you all the details and stuff it's gonna be on YouTube and you know I'm going back to the build here and what I did was I heated up a piece of uh, um, 3 2 piano wire and poked a hole in the, the little tire mount so I could fit like you know the tire in it you know, so it'll actually just kind of sit on there and not have to worry about anything. Yeah, kind of little offsets, but, you know, that's okay. I'm not really worried about that. Just kind of offsets, you know, it's probably not latched down all the way. But I wanted to put a little magnet so it's not, like, flopping around. 
So why don't we go ahead and let's check out what we started off with. You know, this nice little Range Rover Classic from Hot Wheels. Good little casting. Really happy with the way it turns out. And I'm just, I, I like this casting overall. I mean, like, maybe one of these days I'm going to do another style build. Maybe a dragster or, you know, who knows. But, without further ado, why don't we go ahead and check out the final results. <laughs> 